Welcome back, everybody. Now, the first thing you can notice, Edwin, he's not with me. So where is he at? Well, truth is, right now we're having scheduling issues with work, and hopefully, I hope this can get resolved. Mine and his schedules have both went one way to the other. Hopefully within next the next week, we can figure out a day where we can sit down and shoot together and be able to make it, you know, where it's, you know, Edwin and Joseph talk and then just my ugly mug is doing all the speaking. It's kind of awkward up here without him actually because I don't have somebody to bounce ideas off. I don't have somebody to shoot questions at or vice versa, you know, it's. It's a two-way street when we started this. That's why it's Edwin and Joseph and not just, we. you know, one person talks, the other person behind the camera. So, with that, I'm going to get to Alien Mondays. Right? So, we've been talking about USOs. Uh, a lot of, I think the last maybe three Alien Mondays have all had to do with the USO, especially the USS Nimitz. And I'm gonna bring one up that happened at Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia. Um, it was October 4th, 1967. The witnesses had reported that they'd seen orange lights, uh, some people seen a craft some people really didn't see the craft they seen the lights but they seen the object coming at a tremendous speed right into the ocean most people think that it crashed others said that it stayed on the surface now they sent a uh, the Royal Canadian Navy um, there to investigate their Coast Guard that at first got there um, said that nothing, they, they didn't see nothing really except for uh, weird lights in the froth of the water where it had crashed. So the Royal Canadian Navy, I guess, researched this for about three days. That's what everybody heard and was told. Well, the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON, uh, in the 90s, uh, their investigators found some more facts about this event. Now, apparently their Navy personnel tracked this to a place called Government Point. It's a location about 25 miles northeast of the crash site. There, they picked up the object on sonar. Um, once that happened, they started tracking another object. So now they have two USOs that they're tracking. These two USOs came together and stayed under, you know, submerged all the way in the ocean together for about a week. At that point, a Russian submarine came in, and that's probably when, you know, their government was like, well, what are they doing here? What's going on? Um, and when all that was happening, apparently from the report, the USOs left. So... It wasn't a Canadian craft. It wasn't a Russian craft. Because they were trying to figure out what these objects were too. And what piqued the Russians to go over there. Because as far as I know, that is Canadian waters and not Russian waters. I'm not an expert on how they split the oceans up like that. But that's what it's sounding like. So, with all these incidents happening around the world, 
with USOs. Especially, that's the Atlantic, but me and Edwin live in California, so we hear a lot in the research that we kind of look at about USOs in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, there's a lot of sightings by Malibu, um, a lot of sightings by Catalina Island, sightings down by San Diego. Now, to be fair, San Diego has a military base down there. So, you know, they might have some technology, but I'm not saying that they have technology you can just dip in the water, chill down there for about a week, then go directly into space. As far as I know, nobody on this planet has that technology. And that's the kind of scary part, kind of intriguing part, tech, technical wise. And another thing that I, somebody had posted was um, that I was reading, they were talking about our eyes and the wavelengths of light and what all we can actually see. You know, there's wavelengths of UV light and different light that we don't see. What if they have that technology where they can just easily cloak just by switching to a different wavelength of light or whatever that they're flying past us all the time and we just don't know it. Um, people in big cities, you know, I live in Southern California. There's a lot of sound, a lot of light, especially at night here. We're going to miss it. Where if you go out to like the desert or the country and there's no city light and you can look up and you see the Milky Way and you see thousands of stars and then you can start to understand like, oh, okay. There's probably stuff out here that we are missing. As for these USOs that are coming into our oceans, are there underground bases? I've heard theories of it. I know Edwin's heard theories of it. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there isn't. But there's definitely something or some reason why they're just going into our ocean. Um, there's a lot of strange animals in the ocean. Is it natural? Have we been, you know, DNA spliced? Are they bringing their own stuff and delivering it to the ocean? And then we're slowly finding them and thinking, oh, look, we've had these for thousands of years. Uh, I don't know. That's just an example, guys. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Have any of you seen a USO? Uh, unified, identified, submergible object? You tell me. You know. Uh, that's one I, I haven't seen yet. I'd like to see, you know live close to the beach I'm sure I can get there it's very dark at some of the beaches as long as it's not overcast I'm sure you know you can probably see something but with that alien Monday USO edition is going to close out hopefully this next week Edwin will be back because it's awkward it's weird I don't have somebody to you know shoot questions at talk about just talk about this stuff because I think you get better content when there's two people's opinions and what they think over one even though me and Edwin are like minded in our opinions it still brings different questions and ideas. If any of you would like to see any certain topics, anything on the channel, um, comments, ideas, please comment. Uh, a few you have for the people that have commented 
and gave us ideas and feedback and all that. Thank you so much. Also to the people that have liked the videos, subscribed to the videos. Thank you a lot. That means a lot to me and Edwin. Uh, we're almost to 60 subscribers. No, that doesn't sound like much, but me and Edwin, we were happy that I think we at least got 10. So with that, I'm going to conclude this episode. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Thank you so much. Have a good day or night.